Mr. Dion, I just want to start actually on a positive note. I will say in my dealings, your office, the customer service level has, has been excellent. Uh, my advisor, very timely responses, very clear answers, and that is much appreciated. Um, I want to maybe ask on recommendation number four, one of the things I think our um, committee needs to tackle is the dealing of paid internships. Would I be accurate in saying, Mr. Dion, although it's not specifically addressed in there, when you talk about building uh, or working with the code for sponsored travel, that paid internships would be considered, uh, considered kind of a comparable issue as that in your ruling or your, your recommendation on that? No, in fact, a few years ago, I have ruled that... Uh, <clears throat> An intern constitutes an advantage. An intern is like a gift. The value of the gift is what the, the intern gets paid by a third party. Uh, accepting an intern is like accepting a gift. And several MPs have declared that gift. It's been published in the public registry. Uh, and I, I've also ruled that uh, an MP shall never accept a gift by an entity which is registered to lobby the House of Commons because a gift from a lobbyist is, by definition, unacceptable. It, uh, and thirdly, of course, the, any, any intern through a parliamentary program is perfectly appropriate, of course. We're talking about outside entities providing interns. Uh, in, in building further to that about third parties, because you, where, you, where do you get the degree of separation a little bit? So for an organization, perhaps, that would have a paid internship program that would have a... a that would lobby the House of Commons, but then what about an organization that is considered a not-for-profit but receives funding from organizations? You don't necessarily have that disclosure. Where does the line go on that in terms of that level? Because there could be a degree of separation just through the funding model, the mechanism of how an internship program would be, would be set up. Would that be fair that it gets a little more complex there? Yes, it does, and we've had a few situations where we have analyzed in conjunction with the MP whether the gift was acceptable or not acceptable, considering the structure, the funding structure as well. That's a fact. It's a clear factor in determining whether it's acceptable. For that, and I think this is something as we as we consider recommendations and look at this, we we have to get right because I see uh, I know the value of internships uh, in 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 Parliament and around the Hill here, uh, and bringing young people in and giving them experience and wanting to get it right. I mean, uh, so I, I look forward to some further uh, you know discussion around that issue. One of the other things I wanted to talk about was the, the definition of friends um, in, in that issue. I can understand the intent of it, but the enacting of it uh, could be tough. And I, and I look uh, through the analyst's uh, document to us today that talks about the definition that's placed in your website. Uh, individuals who have a close bond of friendship, a feeling of affection, or a special kinship with the public office holder. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, I, I would have a problem that I feel I have a lot of friends or a lot of people feel are my friends uh, in, in the work that's going on. Family is one thing. You're, you're a cousin, you're a cousin. You're a sister, you're a sister. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to think in our role, a lot of people think, and I like to have a lot of friends and people think I'm a friend, but that's a lot harder to define. I, I respect the fact of an attempt at a definition or interpretation, but it, it gets into a really gray area where... Is that traveling together once a year? Is that sitting together at a community event? Is that being in a wedding party? The definition of that to me is still very vague. And, and again, the optics or the intention of it versus the enactment. Do you have any plans to try to define friends more definitively when we're talking about this? No, in fact, we, uh, sorry, Madam Chair, we, uh, we looked at this. Uh, it is very difficult to define. And again, uh, as uh, mentioned in an earlier question, there are cultural differences as well. The concept of a friend varies from one culture to another, potentially. Uh, and we each have our own definition of who's a friend. Some people feel they have uh, they've had two friends in their lifetime, and some people think they have two thousand friends. You know, so it's very very flexible. Uh, in the Morneau two report, I had to look at the issue. Uh, I applied the criteria developed by my predecessor, which you just read out, uh, and it, it, it has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. So in practice, what an MP could do is describe, discuss the relationship with office, and we would essentially make a determination whether this person is or isn't a friend. In case there is a complaint, uh, we could determine in advance whether somebody would be considered to be a friend according to these criteria. And again, the MP would be protected. But I'm afraid it's impossible to come up with a complete, forever uh, applicable definition. It's absolutely impossible to do that because there are millions of permutations. 